Our next speaker is the immediate outgoing Lord Mayor of Cork, but I want to tell you a little story. Um, see this, if you've, ever, if you've never, anyone here for the first time? Anyone for the first time? Okay, well, there you are. Okay, come on. welcome. This is a wonderful place called The Folly. That's where we began to hold our little event here 10 years ago. And we got an alert a few years ago. Someone contacted me and contacted Martin and said, they're pulling it down. And we said, they're doing what exactly? They're pulling it down. And we came down, myself and Martin and others came down to find that indeed they had begun to pull down this structure. Not knowing what was under it, not caring, just pull it down. And of course I came down and I did a news story about it and we got behind the idea that up with this we shall not put. You can't just start pulling down this structure just because you feel like it. And as you can see, it got reinstated. Many people helped with that. Many people helped with that uh, campaign to, to have it reinstated. But one of them was in fact the immediate uh, past Lord Mayor of Cork, who's also a historian and has become a great friend of this event, ladies and gentlemen, Kieran McCarthy. Dear PJ, dear Carmel, uh, dear Daniel, Patricia, dear Miles, dear Deputy Gould and Councillor Gould, uh, and my dear friends, um, many thanks for the invitation to speak, um, Carmel. Um, my dear friends, by, by trade, I, I collect stories on Cork, uh, on Cork's past and Ireland's past. And they say that um, some stories have the power to, to stop you. They can stop you in your tracks. Some stories, they kind of impress you. Um, some stories make you question, make you wonder, make you dream, uh, make you curious, make you disturbed, and make you explore and to not forget a whole series of emotions. And there are many, many stories in Cork history that have stopped me over the years and made me wonder and made me curious and made me remember, and many stories um, that are spoken about. And in the City Library, my dear friends, um, I regularly take down history books from shelves, and I learn about, we'd say, different locales and neighbourhoods. And you can take down a history book in Black Rock, and you can open that, uh, open that book, and you can read about the story of the old, one of the oldest railway lines in the country that passed through here, the third railway line to be built. You can, talk, you can read about the marina and a former wall to keep ships out from, uh, a swamp. You can read about Black Rock Pier and the fishing village for 2,000 people. You can read about Ringmahan House and the Murphy family and brewing industry. And you can read about Ballinour Village and the Omani uh, legacy and why this peninsula is called the Mahan Peninsula. And you can also read about this 19th century folly and its original purpose and the story of the big house and the Pike family, uh, Besborough House and their steamship industry. And then you turn the page over for Besborough and it's like the ink runs dry. It's like it's the end of the book and you're kind of going surely we're only in early 20th century here well what's missing um and my dear friends um the city's memory bubble on black rock if i can use that terminology does much remembering of bricks and mortars very well but when you dig down into the social elements and talking about the realities of people's lives there are vast vast swathes of voices that are missing um in terms of the city, it's got better in recent years when it comes to oral histories, but the city's memory bubble collection is very, very, very selective and heavily influenced by Ireland's memory bubble, which is also very selective. As a place, um, Cork and indeed Ireland, we don't do traumatic history retelling. We don't do turbulent history retelling, dark history retelling, oppressive history retelling, control history retelling, so to speak. And I was going to add, doesn't do very well but to such a statement, but we just, we just don't do it. Um, when it comes to traumatic history, it's not in mainstream school curricula. It's not in mainstream oral history. It's not in mainstream Irish history books. It's not in mainstream history conferences for the most part. It's not in mainstream history performances or pageantry or festivals or heritage gatherings. And the recent reports from central government on topics such as the industrial schools and the modern baby homes, yes, they're an important step, but only one step uh, towards reconciliation of traumatic history and memory uh, in Ireland. And so the importance of the gathering here for the past 10 years should never be underestimated. And it's so crucial for many reasons. Um, this gathering is a beacon 
are a lighthouse to not only tell the stories of what happened here, to tell the stories of the human experience of what happened, but also lead the calls to break the selectiveness of Cork and Irish history and completing the multitude of memory banks that are only partly explored. Some are forgotten about, some are remembered, but certainly all of them are not put together. Um, it is said that if you don't know your past, you, we don't know where we're going. Our history can repeat itself if we don't learn from the past. But if we don't explore all the past, and if we don't unlock all of the history, then the paths of our future will only be laid out partly. Uh, and we won't even learn uh, effectively kind of um, going forward. Besborough needs to be a place where the selectiveness of history is broken, and that the woven vines of stories and histories and memory is unwoven and laid out properly, where the questions are answered and more questions asked and more answers given. And not just that we, not just Cork people learn from this site, but also the rest of Ireland as well. Um, this event today and other impressive voluntary work has been the stay of all those involved with the Besborough story for not just one decade, but for decades and decades. Uh, and in essence, the story here, um, and I, I echo the calls of the previous speakers, need to be at least in mainstream school curricula, in mainstream oral history, in mainstream Irish history books, in mainstream history conferences, in mainstream history performances, pageantry and festivals, and heritage gatherings. And above all, um, I share the perspective that this site here in Besborough needs to be a large-scale uh, commemoration memory site or park. Um, in my head, I'd like to see the whole space as a prominent commemoration site in our city and in our region. And that's my call to on board uh, Fanala. Because it is my hope that in the next 12 months of Broad Fanala, yes, we'll come to a decision. And if the decision is the developer can't build on the land, well, the question is, what next? Um, and so in my head, uh, central government should purchase the site from the developer and then turn into a commemoration um, site itself. And my dear friends, yes, to do that as a sincere nod to those whose personal lives are woven to the mother and baby home story, but also as a commemoration lighthouse of the journey Irish history and all its nuances still need to travel. Where the memorial site here with the folly can be at the heart of it um, and where the stones represent the pieces of a puzzle that need to be resolved um, and that the folly itself can be a place of discussion, a place of resilience, of hope, of justice, of dignity, of voices, of truth, of survival. Um, and to echo uh, the previous uh, voice, um, a place of letting people live and a place of the strongest souls. The names of the babies accounted for and unaccounted for need to be in large stones across this commemoration um, site. Seats, commemoration sculptures, pieces, healing spaces, thought-provoking spaces, history-telling spaces, a space for all to just come and reflect, not just a space in Black Rock or a city space, but a national European site of reflection. Why should it, such, why should it just be a small site? Let's broaden out to the whole uh, tens of acres of land that we actually have here. And we do need government, local government, of which I'm a part of, and societal intervention for this, and all of this working together. So I hear your call as well, Carmel, in your opening speech. My sincere thanks to all the team again for organising this event for the past 10 years and all the, the daily work put in. I don't think it's just once a year um, to put the story, uh, this, this story for justice here um, and try to put on the mainstream Irish history map, so to speak. Um, I remain supportive as a local historian, as a councillor in Cork City Council and I remain conscious that we all need to gather together even more uh, to work through the history, heritage and memory of not just this particular site, um, but we've also heard about the other sites across the country, and what I call these other precious sites of memory that also need to be uh, unpacked. Thank you so much.